The Night Beat starts right now. It has now been six days since almost park mom Suzanne Simpson was last seen. Tonight we have new pictures of Suzanne to share with you in hopes that someone remembers seeing her. The night team Zaria Oates has been in contact with DPS all day who updated her about the search efforts this weekend. New pictures in from Suzanne Simpson's loved ones, hoping the photos will jog someone's memory and maybe help them remember if they saw her. The 51-year-old mom was last seen on October 6th. As of October 12th, Suzanne is still missing and her husband, Brad Simpson, is in jail on separate charges with an additional hold by federal authorities. His bond is $2 million for two charges, assault causing bodily injury, family violence, and unlawful restraint. Even if he were to make the bond payment, we're told Brad Simpson would likely then be placed in federal custody for further questioning. The almost Park police chief says the charges Brad Simpson is facing are not currently related to his wife's disappearance. But the chief says Brad is also not providing any information to help find her. He still has not co cooperated. Um, we would love for him to give us some information because we're searching for her. Uh, the children have reached out and we're cooperating with them to try to get uh, try to get as much help as we can. Obviously, these these four kids miss their mom, and so we're doing everything we can. However, Brad Simpson's brother, Barton Simpson, shared on Facebook that the family is, quote, devastated by the disappearance of Suzanne, and they're doing everything they can to fully cooperate with law enforcement. The Department of Public Safety tells KSAT anyone with information about Brad Simpson's black pickup truck should contact the Olmos Park Police Department. They're specifically seeking information about Brad's GMC AT4 pickup truck, license plate MWD 7050, between the morning of October 7th and 11 p.m. on October 8th. Authorities have launched several searches for Suzanne Simpson over the past week. As of Saturday, DPS does not have plans for additional large scale searches over the weekend. There's less activity now because we have limited resources and we're uh, we will activate more searches here as needed. If you have any additional information, you're still asked to contact Almost Park Police Dispatch at 210-822-2000. Additional information, including domestic violence resources, can be found on our website. Zaria Oates, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Zaria. Well, in light of this high profile case, a group of local nonprofits is making it clear there are so many domestic violence resources available to survivors in our communities. Our Devin Karp was at the Purple Hearts Healing Together Resource Fair on the city's west side and shows how they're building trust for survivors whenever they decide they're ready to receive help. Growing up in a family that, you know, you just go to school but don't say anything. We know that the police were here last night, but don't talk about it. You know, breaking that stigma. Rosemary Williams says she wants to be part of the solution, and she knows she's not the only one. Williams says you can't go far in this West Side neighborhood without finding someone who wants to help. Well, we're here to create conversations, connectability, and so we're doing that today. I'm excited about it. It's going to take all of us. No matter what may be going on in someone's home, Big Mama's Safe House and other nonprofit resource providers came together today for a domestic violence community prevention event. We do that by feeding them, by connecting sociably, having uh, uh, crafts and kids activities. We have a self-care table. Williams says she's seen most domestic violence situations go unreported. That's why bringing together groups like Opportunity Home, Family Violence Prevention Services, and even the Texas Diaper Bank can make starting a difficult conversation just a little easier. We just believe in making sure that people have the resources they need. So let's say that they're leaving a violent situation, they will not always have the items that they need. Eva Lopez says having places where people can feel comfortable is a great first step to getting the help that someone may need. You may not know where to start, and so maybe talking to one agency leads you to talking to another agency because they'll get that word of mouth. They also want to get rid of the shame surrounding domestic violence, which in turn can end cycles of generational trauma. If that's all they know, we have to teach them that there's a better way, that there's boundaries, and that no means no, and enough is enough.
Big Mamas and other nonprofits here want the West Side to know that it's okay to say something because there's always someone who will listen. We have to talk about it and we want to get back to it takes a village. So we want to be here right in the middle after Alazan Apache courts to say that help is not on the way, it's here. And so we want to talk to the women that don't report, that don't talk about. That's why, how do we feed, how do we do that? Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. In other news, right now, Bear County Sheriff's deputies and animal control are investigating after a dog bit a two-year-old child. This happened just before 8 this evening on Rimrock Springs near old FM 471 in far west Bear County. Investigators say the toddler reached out to touch a cane corso that was leashed and it bit the child in the face. The child taken to the hospital with cuts on his face and mouth. Well, we have new details about a shooting back in May that left a man dead. An arrest has been made in the case now. 28-year-old Darius Denson has been charged with the murder of 28-year-old Darius Gonzalez. It happened on May 3rd in an apartment complex on Piper's Creek Street near Culebra Road. According to the police, the victim, Gonzalez, and a woman were leaving Denson's apartment when someone fired shots at their car. Gonzalez was hit several times and died. An affidavit states the woman was in an argument with Denson and called Gonzalez, her ex-boyfriend, to come pick her up. A witness said he overheard Denson and another man talking about the shooting and wanting to leave Texas. Police obtained a search warrant and found a gun with the same caliber as the ammunition found at the scene. Well, an auto theft ring bust is shedding new light into another crime involving the death of a four-year-old girl back in May. We do want to let you know the video you're about to see is hard to watch. This is a video of May 8th, the shooting on Windsor Hollow in Northeast Bear County. Surveillance video shows two men firing up to 30 rounds into a townhome killing the four-year-old girl. Fast forward to this week, Bear County Sheriff's deputies busted a suspected auto theft ring. Now, they arrested 22-year-old Brian Salazar and 20-year-old Isaiah Perales. Arrest records show those two men could also be involved in the Windsor Hollow shooting. According to arrest paperwork, deputies believe the individuals carried out the shooting in retaliation for the death of Salazar's stepbrother, who was killed less than two weeks before the Windsor Hollow shooting. Now, right now, at this time, Salazar and Perales are not facing charges connected to the Windsor Hollow, Windsor Hollow shooting, but court records indicate those could be coming. All right, in the meantime, let's switch gears and head outside with live cam. Late this Saturday night, we've got clear skies in place here in the Alamo City and across South Central Texas. Temperatures now down into the low 80s after we topped off in the mid 90s earlier this afternoon. It was another hotter than average day out there and toasty start to the weekend. More of the same is in store as we look ahead to our Sunday. Take a look at your day part forecast. Somewhat seasonable out there in the mornings, right around 64 degrees by 7 a.m. Once the sun comes up, we will see plenty of it throughout the day, but that's going to help high temperatures when combined with drier air in place. Once again, climb into the mid 90s. 90s will continue through at least Tuesday of next week, but then we see a weak frontal boundary work in. 80s will return to the forecast. Chilly warnings, however, still not in the forecast. 60s will continue for the foreseeable future. We are, however, monitoring maybe a slight pattern change into late next week that could bring us a few isolated chances for rain. We'll get you those details and what we'll be monitoring coming up a little bit later on. All right, thank you, Mia. Well, coming up, the first walk of its kind enters its second year and the governor will be there tomorrow. How the event is fighting fentanyl and saving lives. Moms who have lost their kids to fentanyl poisoning have turned their pain into action. For Americans age 18 to 45, the leading cause of death is fentanyl poisoning, and they want to stop that. I sat down with one of those angel moms about the second annual fentanyl awareness walk, which they know will save lives. Brayden was just the best uh, spirited person ever. He loved his dog Noel. His Mustang was his life. Um, he wanted to be in the military like his grandfather. Brayden Williams was just 21 when he died in 2020 from fentanyl poisoning. His mom, Nikki Goles, said he had medical problems since birth and over time developed severe insomnia. His meds weren't working and he thought he bought an Oxy from a friend. And unfortunately, he never woke up. 
It is her mission to teach families nationwide that fentanyl is now in every type of drug. Just two years ago, it was killing 200 Americans a day, and the numbers are rising. Just a horrific loss, but trying to trying to turn it into something good. She met other moms who had lost their kids to fentanyl poisoning, now called angel moms. They created the first ever fentanyl awareness walk in Texas. Souls walking for souls, pulling in big leaders, including the governor, state representatives, local leaders, and federal law enforcement agencies. I think it solidifies the fact that they know that there is an issue, um, that it's not a red issue, it's not a blue issue. Goals is now on the board, planning this year's event, which is on Sunday. The subject, serious, but there will also be celebration of life and life-saving trainings on Narcan, which reverses the effects of fentanyl and other opioids. As angel moms, we carry it. I have a case over to my right. I've got 48 of them. Anybody, anytime can call or text and we'll bring it to you. Personally. Personally. They speak at schools, businesses, churches, educating everyone they can. We need all the help we can get to fight this. And she does it every day for her Brayden. She loved life big. And she will work tirelessly to make sure other kids will live long lives full of that big love and free of fentanyl. That walk happening tomorrow at the Green Line, and it starts at 4.30. Again, Governor Abbott is slated to be at the event. I am emceeing the event. I hope I can see you there. You can learn more about it by scanning the QR code on your screen. And the weather, the weather should be nice. I mean, it's 4.30 in the evening, so yeah. it won't be cool, but it's been pretty good. It hasn't been too bad considering yeah. the fact that we see drier air into right. the afternoon. So at least while temperatures are going to be hotter than average in the 90s, we won't have to deal with the heat index value. So that's going to be great to look ahead to for tomorrow. But yes, hotter than average was the theme today, and that is still going to be the theme over the next several days. Take a look at high temperatures across the region. 94 degrees was our high temperature here in San Antonio. For context, that's about 10 degrees above the average for this time of year. 84 is our average, and the record actually is 99. Uh, so we were below the, the record, thankfully, but take a look at highs across the area. I mean, we were 95 at Easton Gonzales, 92 in Kerrville, 98 was the high temperature earlier today out in Del Rio. And mid 90s will still be the theme over the next 48 hours. Again, well above average before we start to see those temperatures come down into the middle to later portions of the week thanks to a weak frontal boundary that's going to try and dip its toes into south central Texas. So let's go ahead and talk about those changes right now. You can see we are quiet here in San Antonio across south central Texas and the vast majority of the Lone Star State. We are still under the influence of this high pressure system off to our west that's going to try to work its way closer to us here over the next couple of days, which is why plenty of sunshine is still in the forecast even into the early portions of the upcoming week. But notice by Wednesday that high pressure system is going to break down. An area of low pressure approaching the East Coast is going to try and drag a very weak frontal boundary into our neck of the woods. That's why high temperatures come down into the mid 80s, especially by the second half of the week. However, it's looking like we'll start to see more humidity work back in by the later portions of next week. And when you combine that with a low pressure system approaching from the west that's actually going to help us introduce a few isolated rain chances back into the forecast. So as of right now, we are going to be very dry and quiet over the next several days. But as early as Thursday, we'll introduce that 20% chance back into the forecast and that will continue even into next weekend as well. And we will definitely take any rain that we can get. If you missed it, this is the latest drought monitor update that was released on Thursday. And unfortunately, we saw conditions actually get a little bit worse, especially here in San Antonio and into Bear County. We now have severe drought that has been expanded farther off to the east and even this pocket of extreme drought across the hill country that has been expanded as well through much of Bandera County and now into far northern Medina as well as Uvalde County. So hopefully we will see a few more of those rain chances pan out again into the second half of next week and into the following weekend. But for now, dry and quiet out there tonight and that will be the theme into our Sunday as well. Mostly clear skies to kickstart 
the day, 64 degrees expected by 7 a.m. Plenty of sunshine around lunchtime. We have temperatures climbing into the mid 80s. There's that forecast high temperature right around 95. So yes, still hot into the afternoons, but at least we don't have to deal with those heat index values. So that is going to be nice. It'll be 96 tomorrow in Canyon Lake, 94 out east in Seguin, 93 in the Lost Maples area and 94 off to our southwest in Divine. So putting it all together again, mid 90s continue into Monday. By the way, if that 95 verifies, it'll actually tie the existing record high for the day of 95. Looking forward to those temperatures coming down at least into the afternoons next week with a few isolated chances for rain. Mornings still pretty mild. Okay, today was a very fun and fascinating day in the KSAT newsroom, and I think Courtney and Zaria are going to show us how kind of all of that panned out. Okay, we are here with Zaria Oates. Zaria, you seem to be wearing a Texas Longhorn it's shirt. It's unfortunate. Oh my goodness, I lost a bet. And <laughs> here's to all the kids, never bet on something that you are not sure you're going to win because I would never be caught in a Longhorn shirt otherwise. Well, now you're on television with one. All I have to say is boomer sooner. Okay, well, I think you're gonna have to put up your horns. I, I think you have to do it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Tough. That was tough. The hardest thing I did all day today. You know what, though? We, we had such a good time watching the game together. and You did. Okay. You did. I had such you a good did. day. You <laughs> did. I had, such I a, had a rough time. day. <laughs> but I will say, you're such a good sport. I try to be. I try Fun to bet. be. It's tough. We'll see you next year. Maybe though. next it's year. It's going to be okay. fine. It's going to be fine. Hook, hook em horns are. Oh, boomer sooner. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was so good seeing her in a Longhorn shirt, Nick. Yeah, I mean, what an incredible game yeah. that we saw today. And absolutely like beat down that we were going to be talking about not just a little bit, but also showing you the highlights. Plus, our Mary Rominger was there. She has a full breakdown of the post game of this huge matchup of the Red River rivalry. And then after that, we got some high school district games you do not want to miss. It's all coming up right after the break. The Red River rivalry never disappoints. Sure, one side is not going to like the outcome, but no matter how good or bad the teams are, the hate they have for each other just makes it a lot more fun. Out to the Cotton Bowl we go. The Sooners looking to take down the number one team in the land. Oklahoma's Tyler Kelter drills a 42-yarder to get on the board first. Then in the second quarter, Quinn Ewers moving out to his right. Looks back across the field for Gunnar Helm, who breaks a tackle and dives into the end zone. Later in the quarter, a handoff to Quintravion Weisner. He sits a Sooner down with that move, but then fumbles the ball just before the goal line. Silas Bolden jumps on it for the touchdown as Texas would dominate this one 34-3. Our Mary Rominger was there and has more from Dallas. There was concern surrounding both offenses entering the Red River rivalry, Nick. How long would Quinn Ewers need to return to midseason form after missing two games with an injury? Is true freshman quarterback Michael Hawkins Jr. up for the task with limited weapons after the injury bug hit the Sooners receiver room? But in the end, the story of the 120th Red River rivalry was Texas's defense. Our defense has assumed a real kind of um, swagger about them. Our best ball is yet to come. Um, we only let three points up today, but um, we're going to go look at that film and we're going to see some run fits that I missed, that some other people missed, um, and we're going to clean those up. The press and everybody around um, outside the locker room might say, wow, this is such a complete defense. But everybody in the locker room knows that the offense gets after our butt a lot um, during the week of practice. Um, and so we have so much to, to get better at. And that's what I'm so excited for. I'm impressed with, with our guys. Yeah, we enjoyed the win, don't get me wrong. And the locker room was fun and all that. But it's, it's almost like our team knows there's more work to do. Now offensively, things weren't perfect. Ewers owned up to missing some throws and leaving some points out on the field, but there's plenty for Texas to build on as the next test is Georgia. From the Cotton Bowl, Mary Rominger, KSAT 12 Sports. Back to you, Nick.
Uh, thank you, Mary. Let's check in on some more Texas teams and see how they did today. UTSA on the road taking on Rice, losing in a close one, 29 to 27. And up in San Marcos, Texas State handling business against Arkansas State, 41 to 9. Over at UIW, some pink smoke for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The Cardinals hosting Nichols State, who they lost to last year after a Colonel's field goal. The Cardinals taking flight. Zach Calzada throwing on the run to Lontrell Turner, who takes the contact and spins in for the touchdown. He's too strong with it. Next possession for Nichols. It's a fumble and defensive lineman Lloyd Johnson picks it up and returns it 30 yards to the house. Tell us how you feel, Mr. Lloyd. Revenge win for the Cardinals, 55 to 10. Well, Saturday night high school football games were also a big part of today's schedule. We're going to show you two games right now and then some more coming up in a little bit. Now let's head out to Gustav Stadium where the Harlan Hawks were taking all the Holmes Huskies and we're looking for their first win in district. First play from scrimmage for Harlan, a screen pass to Peyton Matthews, who's got plenty of blockers and speed to go with it. Nobody's going to catch him around an 85 yard touchdown. This one was all Harlan 48 to 7. Then over at Ferris State in Madison, taking on Clark, both on an expedition for a big district win. Mavericks QB Blake Hickman finds Jordan Clay, who laterals to Elijah Moten, who takes it down the sideline before the Cougars catch him inside the five. The Mavericks set it for a field goal on that drive. Cougars responding in the next quarter, handoff to Tristan Childs, who gets held up at the one yard line. Quick snap on the next play for QB Isaiah Santia who gets in for six. Clark would go on to win it 27 to 17. And we got so much more coming up in a little bit. Highlights of the classical Rejia that was played right here in town at the Alamo Dome and a chance to win a signed jersey. So stay with us. It is homecoming season, and what would homecoming in Texas be without mums? Students in other states wear them this time of year, but Texas does it different. In this case, that explains we found out how this tradition got started. Tis the season. Not fall, not football, mom season. My mom said, go big or go home, I guess. <laughs> and big they are. I want to say like seven pounds. Bows, braids, bling and more give a mom its meaning. NHS member, track, student council pride and patriotism chair, uh, Spanish Honor Society and senior class president. My favorite part of the mom is that my mom made it for me. This big tradition may just be a big metaphor for the oh so big reputation of Texas. Big hearts, big love, big football, big community, big family, big. I'm Amy Schultz and I'm the author of Momentous. Momentous, a book about the origin and evolution of Texas homecoming moms. Around the turn of the century in the 1900s, chrysanthemums were popular. They were kind of haute couture. And they bloom in the fall. Guess what else was blooming around the turn of the century? American football. The first high school football game played in Texas was in Galveston in 1884. But you know, it was still kind of rough and tumble. And so what were schools to do to bring people to games? Well, so one idea was to create the concept of a homecoming. The University of Missouri gets credited with the first homecoming moms, live chrysanthemum flowers with a few ribbons given to a homecoming date. So how did we go from that to this? Because Texas did something different than everybody else. After World War II, there was a baby boom in the 1950s. Then in the 60s, a population boom with more people moving to Texas. High schools were being built fast and florists couldn't keep up. So customization was already happening by the 60s, but florists were like, oh my gosh, uh, we have these are live flowers. We can't make them weeks and weeks in advance. So the idea of introducing artificial flowers started floating around. Florists helped convince people that a homecoming mom could be a keepsake, not just something that would wilt and wind up in the trash. And once you start believing that a homecoming mom is a keepsake that can reflect the individual who wears it, moms get involved. And DIY they did. In the 1970s, a recession hit. Big bucks for a big mom wasn't affordable. So moms started mom making. Michaels, 
opened first store in Dallas in 1977. Hobby Lobby opened its first store the year before in Oklahoma City. And so suddenly all of these homecoming mom supplies came whooshing into the market through North Texas. This is my showstopper this week. My name is Ronnie Wiggins. The name of my company is Spirited Moms by Spirited Mom. How did you get into mom making? Because we were on a tight budget when, we were, when I was in high school. Ronnie makes custom moms out of her own home. Garters too for the guys or the girls all created in a room full of ribbons. This boa I call my standout boa. Floor to ceiling feathers and flowers and an arsenal of glue guns. On average, how long would you say it takes you to make one mum? It's probably between six to eight hours because I make all the braids, I have to do the crown, I have to put everything together. She makes about 70 to 80 mums a year. There have been many nights that I have uh, forgotten to go to bed. I have forgotten to eat. Ronnie's busy season is August to November, but even in her off season, she's prepping for next year. So I have hangers of braids over there for different schools. There are even mum maker retreats. We have discussions about marketing, social media, trends, the Pantone color of the year, because that sometimes determines what colors we're gonna see in mums. That's right, mums aren't just about school colors anymore, and they're not just for a homecoming date. I've seen girls wear garters, I, like, why not, right? They're a reflection of the person wearing it. There's a lot of personal storytelling that is going on in the mom, and especially the senior year. I've seen quite a few moms that tell the story of what that student's gonna do after graduation. People always talk about the rules for moms. Oh, it can only be from your date. Oh, it can only have this. Oh, it can only be school colors. And I always tell people there's no rules for moms. There's no rules. People have come to me and said, I want Hello Kitty on a mom, and I want you to build the mom around that. Then there are mom trends, and just like in fashion, they're always changing. What are the trends right now, this year? Right now, we're still we're still looking at croc mums, where people are doing the little mums that go inside of the croc shoe. Oh, so they're putting it like wow. a little one inch flower, and they decorate it, and they put it inside the croc. I have never in my life heard of this. The mum earrings, where people are actually making earrings that match the mum that the girl is wearing. And then of course the big one is the Stanley mum. Stanley mums, a mum accessory for the insanely popular mug. Let's make a Stanley mum. It's blown up on social media, which is where mum trends spread these days. I'm Putting about do. six inches or however tall your Stanley mum is. And this is a mum that goes on yes. the Stanley. This is a mum that goes on the Stanley. Even though these tiny mums get big likes, Ronnie doesn't sell them. Usually there's a cost associated with it and and it's a lot of work. Ta-da! Stanley mom! I'll have to put this on my knockoff Stanley. <laughs> Very cute. Speaking of cost, moms can get pricey. It all depends on what the customer wants. $35 is where you start with garters, and as far as going up to moms, you can go up to probably about six, seven hundred dollars. Six to seven hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. How about that one with the boas on it? Mm -hmm. That one is uh, 400. Prices can get high, but apparently so can moms themselves. A few stories in some cases. Last year, I was able to find 13 schools across the state of Texas that made mums that were at least 18 feet tall. Whether you order or DIY, go big or go small, mums are what you make them. I love doing this, I really do. And it's who's wearing them that counts most. Mums are a love story and I've never found any reason to think otherwise. All right, welcome back everyone. Let's head back outside with live cam. Clear skies in place. Again, temperatures starting to fall into the low 80s. Hey, this week has been really cool when it comes to what we've been able to see in the south central Texas sky. Thursday night for the second time this year, we were able to see the Aurora Borealis in a few areas that were outside of the city lights didn't have as much light pollution. Through October 18th in the evenings, about 40 minutes after sunset, which tomorrow is going to be around 7.05. So really in between the window 
window of about 740 to 8 p.m. A comet may actually be visible once again. If you are away from city lights, you'll have the best chance of seeing it looking west just to the right of Venus, which is a bright star out there near the western horizon. It's going to start to get higher and higher through each evening through October 18th. So just something cool that you might be able to see. Binoculars will help you. And if you do happen to get any pictures, be sure to upload those to KSAT Connect. We'll have another full check of that forecast coming right up. The Rock at La Cantera has officially opened a brand new official Spurs fan shop. These are photos sent to us by the Spurs. The fan shop will sell official Spurs merchandise and feature interactive displays and special merchandise drops tied to key moments throughout the year. You can read more about the shop on KSAT.com. I always love the pictures of the coyote really getting into the spur spirit always. All right, we've got plenty to talk about still when it comes to the forecast. I do want to talk about the tropics because that was a big topic of conversation, not for us here in South Central Texas, but for Florida, of course, as Hurricane Milton made landfall near Sarasota last Wednesday. Good news as of right now, the Atlantic Basin looking relatively quiet out there. There's just one little area in the far eastern Atlantic that the National Hurricane Center is flagging for potential tropical development, but it is a low chance over the next seven days at only a 20% potential. By the way, if you were curious, the next name on the list for the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season is Nadine, followed by Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sarah, and Tony. So we'll continue to keep you posted on that. Of course, over the next several weeks, hurricane season running officially through November 30th. Let's get a check in though on the Sunshine State following Milton as they continue to pick pick up the pieces with some of the damage in the aftermath that Milton left behind. As of right now, still a million customers in the state of Florida without power. The good news is, though, is that weather is going to be quiet for them over the next several days, so that should help as crews continue to get out there and try and get that situation up and running, more power restored. But you can see flood alerts still continue for many areas, especially across the Florida Peninsula, and that, of course, is in the wake of these rainfall totals from Milton, especially from Tampa, stretching over to Orlando and even Daytona. There was a swath of 12 to 18 inches of rain that fell. A pretty sharp gradient, though, as you work your way farther up to the north, just over an inch to about two inches closer to the Jacksonville area, stretching over to just east of Tallahassee. But again, temperatures and weather conditions getting a little bit better for them in the days ahead. Pretty quiet out there, and that is still going to be the case for us here in South Central Texas as well. Just toasty still into the afternoons, at least through about Tuesday. Highs in the 90s are expected before we see those high temperatures fall into the 80s. A little bit closer to average for this time of year as we start to see this weak frontal boundary work its way farther off to the south and at least try to dip its toes into parts of our area. So that's going to be our first weather headline here. 90s for now, but 80s will return by the middle of the week. Chilly morning still not in the forecast, unfortunately. Low continue in the 60s, at least for the foreseeable future. But as we start to see a low pressure system approach from the west, that could give us slightly more energy combined with some added humidity to at least help give us a few isolated rain chances. We'll see those return to the forecast as early as Thursday into next week. But I do want to talk about those low temperatures again. Mid 60s will continue through at least Tuesday, potentially low 60s here in San Antonio with 50s possible up into the hill country by the middle of the week. That would be slightly below the average, but then we'll start to see those creep back up into the mid to upper 60s, even into next weekend as we start to see more of that moisture work back in. So here's a look at tomorrow morning. Low to mid 60s will be a common theme across South Central Texas. We'll start our day right around 64 degrees here in San Antonio. Once the sun comes up, plenty of it is in store throughout the day. 85 degrees expected for any lunchtime plans around noon. There's that high temperature topping off about 10 to 11 degrees above the average for this time of year at 95. More of the same into Monday, which will be record challenging, but at least we'll start to see those trend down into the second half of next week with those isolated chances for rain into next weekend. All right. Thank you, Mia. Those temperatures are looking great, Mia. And the number one team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns, also looked great this afternoon. Another edition of the Red River rivalry is in the books. So we're going to break down some of the biggest plays in the Longhorns' big win. And speaking of big games, the Clásico Regio was right here in town. Wait till you see some amazing goals when we come back.
Red River rivalry. Say it three times fast and all your football dreams will come true. Today we got another edition of a game that we all love every calendar year. Trivia fans, remember this day is the first time that this game is an SEC conference showdown. And the 18th ranked Sooners want to give the number one Texas Longhorns its first loss. Tyler Keltner drills a 42 yarder to get the Sooners on the board first. And in the second quarter, Quinn Ewers moving the pocket out to his right. So that Gunner Helm will be wide open. Helm dives into the end zone, and Longhorns are going wild. Later in the quarter, handoff to Quinn Travion Wisner, making Sooner defenders whiff at air, but he fumbles the ball just before the goal line. Silas Bolton jumps on it for the touchdown as Texas just dominated this game 34 to 3. Let's check out some more Texas teams. UTSA lost to Rice on the road 29 to 27 and Texas State with a dominant 41 to 9 win over in Arkansas State and over at UIW. The Cardinals took care of Nichols State 55 to 10 and in the Battle of the Tigers Trinity taking care of Siwani 45 to 26. Do you love football being played at all levels of the sport in a beautiful weekend? Well, I do. And so do the people over at Ferris Stadium for the nightcap of today's schedule. The Brennan Bears looking to stay undefeated in district, taking on Marshall. Running with an ax is not recommended. First possession for Brennan. Play action fake. Caden Glass airs it out to Donovan Lard, and he is in a foot race. Heel to hamstring, pump the arms for an 80-yard plus touchdown. Brennan would get the win big, 38 to 14. Let's check in on some more high school scoreboards from today. Clark Cougars getting a win over Madison, 24 to 17. The eighth ranked Hawks of Harlan dominating Holmes, 48 to 7. And in the Roosevelt Rough Riders, full control with a 42 to 7 win over Lee. I don't know about you guys, but I've been completely forgetting that the NBA season is about to begin at the end of the month. The San Antonio Spurs play their final home game of the preseason tonight. No Victor Weminyama, but the ball movement was finding Harrison Barnes for three in the corner. Easy work. Second half, big time rebounds for the Utah Jazz. And rookie Kyle Filipowski puts up two of his nine points, making it a seven point lead. But that didn't last long. Pushing it ahead to Keldon Johnson, who slams it home with a right hand jam. He's mean with it, and the bench loves it as the Spurs get the win 126 to 120. Over at the Alamo Dome, the iconic classical Rio between the robbery of the Tigres and the Riados went down this evening. A huge event welcoming our friends from Monterrey, Mexico. First half, Tigres on the move across into the box. Nico Ibanez with the header in the low corner, getting the fans fired up just 15 minutes in. And the Riados would answer back in the 41st minute. Lucas Ocampos with a rebound header to knot it all up in one goal apiece. Then in the second half, the Tigres just trying to keep it out. But a pass right in front to Roberto De La Rosa gives the Riados the lead. And it would stay that way. Two to one Riados with the win. And if you like those jerseys you just saw and want to get a signed one for yourself, KSAT has given away a frame jersey signed by the Tigres UANL players. And right now, you can enter to win until 11.59 p.m. on October 16th. Scan the QR code on your screen or find more information on our website, KSAT.com. We'll be right back with a final look at your forecast, so stay with us. All right, still hot over the next couple of days in the afternoons, but at least high temperatures trend down throughout the second half of next week, and we'll see if you isolated rain chances return. Have a good morning since it's 12.07. Happy Sunday. If you stayed with us, we love you for that. <laughs>